snowflakes and things that go bump in the night. The control over the social media by the liberal left has exceeded all bounds. I was complained about yesterday for my article, God Save the Queen. Now, my friend Juan, like he would say, I ain't even going to lie to you, man. That article was an afterthought. I was slumming around for a subject and Trump was in merry old England about to sit down for fish and chips with the, the Queen. <laughs> Boring. Of course, the lame brain media was all over a story about the uh, president uh, dropping by uh, to offer his con condolences wearing to the uh, Virginia Beach people wearing his golf cleats uh, and carrying his hat in his hand. They paid particular attention to how he combed his hair and I thought I was digging for a story. So I penned this homogenized going nowhere piece about solidarity between Great Britain and the United States and sent it up via WordPress, another death knell for a story. And I did the usual distribution. Now, I'm known to write some dynamite stuff, but this stuff wasn't even a firecracker. I like to take the minorities and tie them up and, and make the white folks you know, ill at ease. Anyway, that having been said, I rarely get a complaint. Well, Doc Green tried to share this milk toast of an article on Facebook and discovered that sharing that piece of work had been blocked for uh, it disturbed people and had hate speech in it. Who in the hell hates Queen Elizabeth? I mean, who is really that interested in British politics? And they did it in the most chicken shit fashion. Instead of just removing the share button, they fixed it so if you copied the link and tried to paste it, you get this message that the article was persona non grata. They wrote an entire algorithm targeting the butcher shop. My mama told me I did good one day. I scanned the article to see what the hell I'd said that so offended Facebook that they go through all that trouble. I poked a little fun at the mainstream media, but heck, everybody does that. I insinuated that Pelosi was a drunk. Well, we've all seen Chuck Schumer holding her up during a press conference. Maybe it was a remark about Bill Clinton's haircut. No, the snowflakes would have just fact-checked that and smeared it up my butt. Couldn't be that. The article ended with the most boring one of the most boring paragraphs that I've ever written in my life. So I went back and I reread it again, and there it was. The very title and the first word in the body, God. I mentioned God. That and I used the word queen, and this obviously disturbed the left because they were thinking I was sicking God on the LBGTQ community. How did I miss that? God damn. Butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Okay, a few days later, or a few days ago, I'm sorry, I came upon something that showed how social media platforms will cut their nose off to spite their face. As you may or may not know, each Friday about 2 o'clock, Texas time, I'm a guest on Doc Green's Right Side of the Mic broadcast via American Voice Radio. And it's a real broadcast, folks. I've had relatives listen to it in their car while driving through San Diego. Well, after the show, I do a little edit, and I distribute my portion of the, on the YouTube link. Of course, I share the entire show, too, as I do with the Apostle Claver during his Raging Elephants broadcast. Anyway, I got an idea to do an article that day on the Tea Party Tribune. I took the link and constructed a piece on the trip that consisted of just a picture that linked right back to YouTube on the video I previously mentioned. There was nothing else the reader could do except click the picture and bounce over to YouTube to watch the segment. So later that day, I'm checking the numbers on the trip, and there's the usual, oh, one or two hundred hits and uh, reads there, and I go over to YouTube, and what I find? Nine. What's wrong with this picture? Am I in the wrong joke? <laughs> Back in the day, when I, Jackie, sprang on the scene and made 617 videos, of which 67 were published on the tube, in those videos, the little Jewish girl from Detroit discussed everything from teen sex to how to kick a heroin habit with her young audience, and the views rolled. YouTube loaded her up with ads, and Jackie Joe made them a lot of coin. Jackie may be gone, but her spirit still lives at the butcher shop. The butcher shop is an umbrella sheltering many writers of all makes and models. From Jappy Gypsy, who would have Jerry Falwell Jr. as the chief advisor to president, to Brother Cleo, who wants to have free medical and food stamps for all. If you want to cut a meat, the butcher shop has it for you. But nine views? Are you kidding me? Zuckerberg and company hate America so bad that our money is no good. The same machine that Jackie put together in 2006 still exists. And if it were treated fairly and honestly, YouTube, Google, Twitter, and all the rest would make money. 
So how do we combat this? Volume. You pump up the volume. Remember that word umbrella? We have already published today's article in the Tribune, the Queen article that was a mirror of yesterday's WordPress article. This very article that you're hearing about and reading right now will be on the Trib tomorrow morning and will be seen through all of our alternative media distribution outlets, networks such as the Damn Good Times, Conservative Tribune, the Liberty Beacon, and many others from L.A. to, to London. And that's not counting radio shows, commentary by other put shop contributors, or just plain old folks sharing with family and friends. So, to Mr. Zuckerberg, YouTube, and all the ships at sea, I want to conclude with this question. <laughs> now you've tasted our mutton. How do you like it, huh? <laughs>